think you know everything about Google Docs? Think again. In this video, I'll reveal five Google Docs secrets that will help you write your book faster, better, and with less distractions. Discover how to research effortlessly, format like a pro, and easily brainstorm different plot points. Plus, I'll show you how to edit with an incredible safety net and unlock hidden functionality. Paint existing formatting. To easily copy and paste formatting from one section of your document to the next, if you have the perfect line indents and spacing and you want to keep that, all you need to do is use the Paint Format tool. To use this, just select the formatting that you like, go up here to this Paint Roller Paint Format, select that, and as you can see next to it, I now have a paint roller next to my cursor. This is good for one painting, so it will only copy and paste the settings once, otherwise you have to recopy everything. So when you left click and drag, make sure you have everything you would like, then just let go, and it's gonna copy and paste my settings. Mind mapping with draw shapes. For writers who like to brainstorm and visually map out things, you can use the draw shapes to visually connect character relationships, plot points, and maybe make a character sheet with some interesting blocks. In order to do this, you just need to go up to the insert menu and insert drawing and then select new. This is going to open up a canvas for you to play with. So you can access the shapes here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select a very basic shape. I'm going to put the problem here with some text. Uh, let's say the problem is, is Joe is hungry and wants bread. His first challenge is that he has no money. Once I have that adjusted, I'm just gonna copy and paste to make this flow a little bit faster for us. You can connect these with the line tool just to show how they relate. And to save this, all you need to do is go to save and close, and this is gonna put it into your Google Docs. It is also really easy to edit this. All you need to do is select it and click edit, and this is gonna let you edit the text. You can move things around if you would prefer having it in a different order. You can also change these to different colors just to kind of separate things out. So it's really easy and fluid to be able to change and revise these. Virgin history. If you're making a really big change to your book, sometimes it's a little unnerving deleting something that big. In Google Docs, you can actually name a version history so you can actually get back to it before you make the change. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete chapter two just so we can see switching between the versions. I'm gonna go up to file, version history, and I'm gonna name my current version. I'm gonna say this is um, my original. I'm gonna click save there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select chapter two. I'm gonna delete that. And it has deleted from my outline over here. I'm gonna go over to file, version history. I'm going to name the current version and I'm gonna name this without chapter two. I'm gonna save that. And let's say I've decided that I don't want chapter two to be gone. So I'm gonna go back to file, version history. Over here on the right, you can see my without chapter two and my original. If I scroll down without chapter two to where chapter two is, you can actually see that this is struck out saying that it's not in my current draft. If I did want to revert back to the original, all I would need to do is right click next to these dots and say, restore this version. I can also rename or remove it or make a copy if I want another kind of copy to play around with. I'm gonna go ahead and click restore just so that I have peace of mind that my final copy of the story that I have multiple copies of is safe. And you can see right here, chapter two has appeared. So I was able to test what it was like without chapter two easily and quite painlessly. Google search within your document. One of the easiest ways to get distracted from writing is by leaving your writing software. So if you need to do a quick Google search and you find yourself ending up on YouTube or social media, you can utilize Gemini if you need to look something up, which will keep you in your document and focus during writing time. To access Gemini, you select up here. I'm gonna go ahead and search for an Ngawa. I would just like to know if it knows what a Japanese term is. Say I forgot what it was in my own book. So I'm gonna say, what is an Ngawa? We'll see what it returns. 
Ningawa is a traditional Japanese architectural element. It is a type of veranda or porch that runs along the outside of the building. Plus one to Google for knowing the Japanese term for that. Now this option is one that you do need to pay for, so it is not free. So this might only be worth it if you are a historical fiction writer or you write history and you need to look up things frequently, or if you're using Gemini in other aspects of your life, like in my next tip. Google Scripts app. Since Google Docs is a cloud-based software, you are able to use scripts to be able to modify and add functionality to your document if you would like. One of the things I started playing around with was creating scripts that would help shorten different things that I wanted to do. An example is creating a word count at the end of my chapter after every chapter. So chapter one, it's gonna spit out what the word count is for that. Now I did a little bit of programming when I was in high school with PHP, uh, a little bit of JavaScript and C+, but I actually used Gemini to export this out for me. So to access this, I'm gonna go up to extensions, app script, and this is gonna open up a new window that's gonna give me a JavaScript code and a little bit of coding that you can mess around with. And here's the code that I was given. It specifically looks for chapters that are broken down from heading one. So if you use something other than heading one, you would need to modify the script, but it's gonna go ahead and it'll find the chapter heading and it'll find the chapter end by looking at the next heading. And then it's just going to calculate my word count and it's going to go ahead and spit it out in italics with kind of like a gray color. So I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna select run. In order to run the scripts, you are going to have to give it permission. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I wrote this script, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I trust it. You do wanna make sure if you're downloading code from other people that you know exactly what it's doing because this does leave you vulnerable. But this is something that I personally played around with on Gemini and it's something that I don't intend to give to anyone until it's really good and solid and parred down. So it's already started and it's already completed here at the bottom. I'm gonna go over here to my staff of justice. I'm gonna open up my outline, I'm going to go to chapter two, and you can see it's added right here, this word count right there at the bottom. And it's broken down all of my word counts by chapter. Now the script is limited. It doesn't automatically update the word count. You do need to manually delete the word count if you do update it later and want to get a more accurate number. Doesn't count things exactly. I think there's a specific way that it's counting the lines and spaces. So if I do select my text and go get the official word count from uh, the tool section in Google Docs, it doesn't exactly line up. But this does show that there is functionality that you can add just to streamline tasks and make things a little bit easier on you when you're using Google Docs. If you liked this tip, subscribe to be notified of future releases, like 10 must-have tools for indie authors or my five app script for Google Docs. If you're interested in learning more about Google Docs, you may enjoy one of these videos.